Even though scientists warned us that it was likely to happen, I don't think many of us thought that it would actually happen. Sure, there was SARS and MERS and Ebola, but those were regional viral outbreaks. But the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, that became a global pandemic very quickly, and I think it caught many people unaware. As we move into the second year of the pandemic, and as we line up to get vaccines, I think it's a good opportunity for us to consider what it means to live in the midst of the pandemic and what role spirituality has in that, to look at the issue of change and our experience of change in this pandemic, as well as to consider what it means to thrive in the midst of this pandemic. So now would be a great time to subscribe to this channel, to like the video, and to click the bell. Since the pandemic began, I have been in closer contact with many of my friends. I email more frequently and call more frequently. Sure, I want to check in and make sure everybody's healthy, but I also want to stay connected because staying connected is an important part of leading a balanced life for me. And as I talk to my friends, I find that what we have to say and what we have to share about living in the pandemic uh, becomes, well, briefer and briefer because one day seems pretty much like the next. We've stopped doing things outside of our homes. We're, we're not involved in the many activities we used to be. So that what we do is very much routine. But yet even in that routine, we find that some days we just get really tired. We feel washed out and exhausted. And as I've talked with my friends about that, and they've all shared they experienced the same thing, we've pondered about why we get so tired in the midst of sort of a simple life and a routine life. And I think the real reason is the stress that we live under because of the pandemic. That stress is simply there. We see that stress in other ways besides exhaustion. Many people have talked about the weight that they've gained during the pandemic. The sales of alcohol in the US have increased dramatically during the pandemic, as have the diagnoses with major depressive disorder and the various anxiety disorders. Mental health practitioners are doing more work than they had before. So there are all kinds of signs and symptoms of the difficulties we have living with the stress of the pandemic. I think that stress gets even crazier for us because there's so much that changes in the pandemic and we're not quite sure when it's really gonna be over. So as I look at the pandemic and the things that I need to do to stay healthy, I became aware that whenever I would leave home, I was preoccupied with making sure I had my mask and the hand sanitizer and when did I wash my hands last and am I standing enough feet away from people. And I was a little bit anxious about all that as it was happening. And I found that something that was very helpful for me was the Buddhist practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness is a kind of meditation. It's being aware of everything that's happening right in the present moment, just being present to what you're doing, of setting aside all distractions, all thought about the past or the future, and just being there as life is happening in the here and now. And I found that as I focused more on mindfulness, as I was more present in the moment, that whenever I was in the grocery store or running errands, I was much more relaxed. I simply did things in a more routine way, in a more reflexive way, and I was conscious of what I did so that I was able to move through the things that I needed to change and take care of myself in a way that wasn't anxiety producing, in a way that wasn't about worry, but that in a way that I found a sense of security in myself, and that was very helpful. You know, spiritual practice was difficult for me at the beginning of the pandemic. I teased my friends and used images from Star Wars and said, you know, I feel like there's a disturbance in the force. I'm unable to meditate. 
And as we joked about it, what I was really trying to get at was I couldn't get subtle enough to get into deep meditation. I continued to persist and many days it felt like I was just going through the motions. But then something clicked inside of me and I began to relax more and more. And I found that as I went deeper in meditation, I was able to think more creatively and in a more relaxed way about my life and my time outside of meditation. And that was very helpful for me so that I was able to start going with the flow. And, and that's one of the things about a regular meditation practice. It helps to make us go with the flow a lot more easily in life so that we're much more adaptable. Uh, so for me, a bedrock of healthy living really is that spiritual practice. Yes, that there are other parts of a healthy life. They include eating healthy food and keeping our food intake or our portion size appropriate. Uh, that we exercise regularly, whether that's even walking through the yard because of not wanting to go to a gym or being out in the neighborhood for a stroll. That we stay connected with people virtually or however we can do that in a way to stay safe. And above all, that we keep a good sense of humor about things, that we find occasions to laugh. And that it's in that balance that we lead healthy whole lives. The important thing for us about the pandemic is that we lead a life that's whole and healthy and balanced. And for me, that balance includes really incorporating spirituality in my life, and that's regular spiritual practice. And it's that the ground of that spiritual practice that keeps me really refreshed and really able to move with what's happening day to day. I remember when I became aware of the pandemic and the virus in March of 2020. I read about it, I learned as much as I could, and I followed the advice of public health officials. You see, this is not my first pandemic, and I learned a lot from the first time I went through a pandemic. In the early 1980s, I was involved in the AIDS pandemic. I was developing services and support programs Simultaneously, I was sitting with friends and people I knew who were dying and trying to offer them comfort and take care of them. I watched in horror as our government did nothing to respond to the AIDS crisis. They really ignored it. And I saw many parallels between what we were going through with the COVID-19 pandemic and that pandemic. And that's part of why I really focused in on what the public health officials had to say. See, part of living through a pandemic is that things change, a lot changes. Every time there has been a massive pandemic, there has been great change. That's been true throughout history. And we've seen in our last year how much has changed for us. And those changes are ongoing. We began the pandemic without being sure how all transmission occurred. So we were told to sanitize our groceries when we brought them home. And it was suggested that it may be a good idea to sanitize the bottom of our shoes before coming in the house, just like they did with SARS, because we weren't sure if that was tracking the virus in. Over time, we grew to understand that the virus really is transmitted through the air. So it's not about surfaces, but it's about what we breathe. So we've had to keep changing and recalibrating. And change is difficult for lots of people. And staying up with those calibrations in the change were confusing because the messages were confusing. Change. It is the one constant in life. We grow from infancy through adolescence into adulthood and ultimately older adulthood. And it's all about change. We go from having youthful ideas and we evolve and become more expansive as individuals. And that's about change. Change is the foundation of life. But what we're experiencing in the pandemic is change happening much more quickly than we're used to. Organizational psychologists have studied change for decades, 
and they can explain in many models and theories what people go through in terms of change. Often when a change is introduced, there are a lot of people who think, huh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's get on board with that. But it isn't long before as the change is implemented that people start having second thoughts. They may feel angry. They may want to go back and feel a sense of loss from the way things were. They, they may be frustrated because the, what needs to change isn't clear. There's denial around all aspects of the change. What happens is people go through a bereavement process. They're in grief because the, what, what they've been used to has been lost and they're trying to move to something new. All the theories of change have something that they refer to in some of the models. It's there in some form in all the stages as a kind of danger zone. That danger zone is when people get to a point where they're very frustrated with the change and some want to revert back to the way things were while others want to continue moving forward. When people revert back and try to recapture the way things were, there's a problem because they can't really go back there. Things have changed. It's not ever going to be quite that way. And so they become brittle and entrenched and fight the process of change. Folks who are trying to move forward get confused as they're moving forward because they're in uncharted territory. So there's a danger as to whether the change is going to work. Let's face what's real here. We're living in that danger zone. There are those who want to go back to 2019. There are those who are ready to move ahead. And unless we as a society are able to sort of get enough on the same page to move ahead, we're going to have some trouble. The reality is that change is a constant. We've changed many things in this pandemic. We've changed the way we work, how we do education. We've changed our shopping patterns and depend much more on delivery services and e-commerce. We've changed our social interactions. We've changed many aspects of our life. We're not going to be going back to the way things were. Instead, as we move into 2022 and 23 and 24, aspects of all these changes are going to go with us. We've been doing these changes for a year now, so we've gotten used to some of the things and like some of them. And society is going to continue to evolve and change. I think what's important is that we stay adaptable, we stay open to change. And I find, of course, that how I do that is through my spiritual practice. Rhineland mystic Meister Eckhart in the 14th century described what spirituality does for us in a word that he coined, veritatis in Latin. It's sometimes translated as greening power. It's sometimes also been translated conceptually as green and wet and moist and juicy. What Eckhart was trying to describe is that the spiritual dimension of our life keeps us green and fresh and malleable, that, that we have that freshness of spring and are ready to embrace growth and grow forward in a creative way. And I think that's really important for us to consider as we look at the changes we're experiencing, that to move through the future of the pandemic and adapt to the change, it means that we stay green, that we stay fresh and buoyant and willing to embrace what comes next for us because we're moving into the future and our future isn't going to be the same as our past. It's going to be uniquely different. And that is a wonderful gift. There's a concept in psychology, resilience. Resilience refers to a person's ability to spring back after encountering an obstacle in life. So if you can imagine going through life and you hit an obstacle that knocks you back and then resilience is being able to spring back and continue moving forward. Well, I think resilience is helpful in some ways. I don't think it digs deep enough 
into what we need to do in the midst of this pandemic. Resilience looks at our getting back to the status quo we had, the level of functioning we had. But I think we need a different kind of functioning. We need to move through life in a different way. And because of that, I think thriving is a more useful construct for us. Thriving is a construct that comes from positive psychology. It's a newer brand of psychology, a newer school of thought. Positive psychology and thriving looks at a person's ability to thrive, to flourish, no matter what the circumstances are around them. And I think that's a really useful concept for us because we're in the midst of some difficult circumstances. So it isn't a matter of just springing back. Instead, we're going to be in these circumstances for a while. So in the midst of the circumstances, we need to thrive, to flourish, to continue to grow and to be the people we uniquely can be. An image I have for thriving has to do with my backyard garden. In the spring, I plant tomatoes and peppers and a few other things. And then I go to a bin that we keep and save over the year. It's filled with compost. All the kitchen scraps and leaves and grass that we've collected get thrown in there and they rot. And they're, they're buggy and they're nasty. And I don't like one in the compost bin. But I go in there and dig out compost and put them around my tomato plants. And the beautiful tomato plants are surrounded by this rotting junk and they thrive. Yes, the compost is the source of their nutrition. It's because of the junk, the dirt, the rotting stuff around them that they grow bigger and fuller and are healthy plants. So I want us to use that image and think about our own lives and what it means for us to be surrounded in a sense by rotting stuff and still thrive. In this pandemic, we've often focused on what we can't do. And to thrive, we need to focus on what we can do and do differently and grow and evolve and become more. So for example, I began the pandemic and I thought, I need to do something with my time. And I first thought, well, you know, I like to write and I like theater, so I'll write a play. So I tried writing a play and I had a nice little story sketched out and tried to write dialogue and it was not any good. And I thought, no, I, I can't do this. I feel like I'm dragging myself down by trying this. So I put that aside. Maybe someday I'll be able to get that, but that wasn't for now. But then I thought, why don't I try developing a YouTube channel. Now, that may sound easy enough, but I've never been good in front of a camera. I've tried, I've been asked to do TV and radio interviews, and I don't do well. So I had coming into this the sense that I really can't speak in front of a camera. I practiced and I practiced and I watched other YouTubes and I tried to understand how I could do this in a way that was authentic to me. So now I have a YouTube channel, and that's been a good thing for me in this pandemic. My partner tried something very different for himself. In the midst of the pandemic, he started watching YouTube videos and learned how to do woodworking. The short end of the story is we now have some beautiful pieces of furniture that he made around our house. In the midst of the pandemic, we've tried new and different things. People did that initially in the pandemic and making bread and cooking and baking, but we need to continue to thrive, to explore, to do new things. I think an important part of thriving is, of course, our spiritual practice. We need to continually go deeper into ourselves to be able to find those roots that enable us to flourish, to grow, and to be transformative. This pandemic is going to continue going on for some time. We don't know how long. And in the midst of the pandemic, it's important for us to know that our lives are worthwhile, that they're filled with meaning. And we're the ones who have to do that. 
And that sometimes, yes, indeed, we're surrounded by the junk of life, the stuff that's smoldering and rotting. But yet, even in the midst of that, we have the ability to thrive. It's part of our spirit to do that. So thriving requires that we really nurture our spirit, that we find ways to continue to move forward creatively. And it's that creativity that's going to sustain us through this pandemic, as well as through the challenges we continue to face in life. Please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, to like this video, and to click that bell. And thanks for being here. Share this video with your friends.